Well, Star Wars has done it again. Just when you think they cannot fall any farther, the director of the Ray movie comes out and offends women. Yes, women. And that's because Charmaine Obechnoy has a case of stolen valor, an achievement she did not earn. She says it's about time that women led Star Wars. The only thing is, a woman started Star Wars. It's time for truth and shaming shills. Hello folks, welcome back to the WDW Pro channel. Happy to have each and every one of you out there as we explain entertainment, keep you ahead of the culture curve, a video of excellence delivered hot, fresh, and straight to your device. X-Wing joins us again. X-Wing, welcome back to the channel. Thank you for having me. Happy to have you and folks, we're gonna dive straight in today as we so often do. Charmaine Obey Chinoy, the new director of the <laughs> Ray movie, she says that she likes to make men feel uncomfortable and she says that it's about time that a woman was the director of Star Wars, that a woman finally is in the mm -hmm. lead when it comes to Star Wars. Now, set aside for a moment, X-Wing, the Kathleen Kennedy side of this, because sure. we are here, you and I, in a fellowship of lifting up the females who have led Star Wars, because it turns out... Those who are worthy. Women, Those yes, who are worthy. With, without women, Star Wars would not exist as it does today. And so we want to honor them and we want to show everyone out there that the director of Star Wars is offending women, in my estimation. I think folks out there, you will agree in just a moment. Let's take a look at it. This out of inverse, and this is from July 12th, 2022. Before the outrage, before they had to switch the narrative, uh, we have what appears to be factual information. The article says 45 years ago, a last minute Star Wars change unlocked the greatest Jedi power without Marsha Lucas, her husband. Then her husband, now ex-husband, George Lucas might have kept Kenobi alive forever. Mm. George Lucas didn't invent force ghosts. In fact, midway through filming the original Star Wars in 1976, Lucas hadn't even considered that a Jedi might survive beyond their physical bodies. His then wife, film editor, Marsha Lucas, suggested the idea that Obi-Wan Kenobi Become a spirit guide to Luke Skywalker very late in production. Here's how a new documentary series unpacks this retro Star Wars bombshell. It goes on to talk about Vice TV. I'm sure Vice trying uh, rapidly to figure out a way to uh, downplay this. Who knows? Uh, who knows? But uh, yeah, this is what we all knew before the uh, the statements by Charmino Bechinoy scrambled the brains of the shills. X-Wing, um, are you as um, offended as I am that we are now being asked to forget about the contributions of women all over who uh, made their mark in Star Wars, that now we have to forget that and pretend they never existed so that we can all <laughs> not offend women and, and follow along with Charmino Bay Chinoy. It's, it's so funny, right? It's only important when it becomes important, right? Only exactly. when it becomes important is it important. Um, yeah, We so, celebrate I mean, them until it's no longer okay because we need to forget about them so that we can make our new virtue signal stand. Yeah, so the you know we can only have so many firsts in filmmaking, uh, and they just keep trying to go and go, and how many firsts can we make? It's the first time that we did this. This girl has a hitcher to get up. It's the first woman who has a hitcher to get up. How many but should women be offended? Next we week? Should should women be offended? Absolutely. Should women be offended that now we're forgetting that we're supposed to dustbin the accomplishments of so many who came before Charmino Bay Chinoy? Well, here's the problem is that I don't think people really realize how important a woman was in the first steps of Star Wars. That's the most important thing. Marsha Lucas was um, obviously the person who edited star wars it didn't used to be called the new hope it was called star wars at one point um and this was somebody who was not just someone to shake a finger at this is somebody that was working with martin scorsese on on taxi driver new york new york um american graffiti even all the way back to george's first on thx so this is not someone who was just a random person. This was not nepotism. This was not somebody uh, that just came out of the woodwork. Uh, this was a very qualified editor that edited Star Wars. Now, wait a minute, wait a minute. X-Wing, are you telling me then that at the very beginning of Star Wars, even before the first movie released, that a woman was actually <laughs> making the kind of big decisions that shaped and saved the franchise? Because many say that she <laughs> saved the first movie. Now she doesn't say that she, 
she maintains a, a position of humility. But many believe that had she not come in there and, and done those edits, you it was game over. You can't save a franchise that doesn't exist. So okay, well she she redeemed say, what the, you, what they had. You would be so bold as to say that George Lucas was the father of Star Wars and Marsha Lucas was the mother of Star Wars. Uh huh. No, no, but 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 what we're supposed to believe is that women have never been a part of it. What you're saying is that from yep. the very beginning, from before the beginning, <laughs> that a woman was leading and guiding Star Wars, and we're supposed to forget about her so that we can all have our modern day virtue signal. So Correct. The Forbes yep. articles, the uh, all the shill articles that are out there. We're all supposed to pretend that Marsha Lucas doesn't exist so that we can follow along with Charmaine Obey Chinoy and her claims. Is well, that, is that how this works? So, so uh, if there's one thing that the, the modern media loves to do, it loves to chop up statements and find small inconsistencies so that they can come back and they can say, well, that's not exactly what I said. We've never had a female of color direct a Star Wars movie. That's why this is special. That was the statement from Charmaine, and that's why this is every, you know, hey, it's a woman of color for the first time that's going to direct. But then, don't forget, you have to boil it deeper. It's actually not the first female director in Star Wars, female color director in Star Wars. Now it's, it's we have to boil it deeper. It's, it's actually the first female director of color of a Star Wars movie. Right, because we've already had female directors in the Star Wars TV shows, but that doesn't count. Lest we forget, that does not count. The only thing that matters is that we have a female director of color that is doing the first movie. That's all that matters because, you know, F all the Hollywood royalty and the amazing female directors that we've had work on projects, whether you like them or not. And most of us would say that they did not. Some of the best episodes that we've gotten out of the Star Wars TV shows have actually come from people like <clears throat> Bryce Dallas Howard. That's right. We'll talk about her in a moment. But, uh, you know, normally I'd be right along with you when it comes to how they parse these things out. We have laughed quite a bit on this channel about uh, the declaration of Disney Plus that The Little Mermaid was the biggest Disney Plus movie ever. And all the, all the articles ran with it. And then at it the was? bottom of them, well, you know, at the bottom of it, you'll find there's a, a sentence in italics and, uh, size five font that reads oh since hocus pocus 2 ah the and, old so, fine and so normally print. i would agree with you <laughs> the old you know, fine that, print <laughs> that's right but in this case take a look at this and and i'm going to be uh covering in depth the forbes article article because it's one of the worst pieces of trash i've ever read in my life uh paul tassie welcome to come on to uh, this channel and defend himself and uh, we'll give him a fair shake at it he may he may beat me in a debate that's how this works so uh paul if you want to come on you're welcome to defend it but uh, imagine again, having a fair shot at speaking I know, but but it's beautiful. here's what Obey Chinoy said. We're in 2024. It's about time we have a woman shape a story in a galaxy far, far away. Mm. Now, she's not saying to direct. She's not saying, literally, she's saying to shape a story. Yeah. There have been many women who have shaped stories in Star Wars. Who that bought, she is ignoring uh, okay. that she who, is. Who actually took over for Lucasfilm when they, when they, mm. sold, when they sold that? Well, that's, that's the yin and the yang. And. Kathleen ah. Kennedy is definitely the Yang. So, oh, that's her name, Kathleen. What I want to do, though, what I want to do, though, X Wing, is I want to concentrate on the women who have made markedly good impressions on Star Wars. Kathleen Kennedy okay. has destroyed it. That yeah. said, you're exactly right. But this, you know, this statement is just carte blanche. She's saying that she's the first woman to guide the story, to shape a story in a galaxy far, far away. And I just, I, I literally find that to be offensive on behalf of women. Specifically on behalf of Marsha, uh, Marsha Lucas, because she basically gave us this franchise in the way that it, it exists today. So it is it is the most unbridled, disgusting, uh, entitled, and hubris filled statement that I think I've heard from a from a uh, a filmmaker, which we can debate later whether or not she is. <laughs> like, just to be able to come out and say that. Uh, the hubris you have to have inside your, your 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 sheltered ego to say something like that is just mind boggling. Well, let's let's go here, X Wing. Um, the response to this, of course, has fallen exactly the way you would anticipate, right? So, anybody who disagrees with uh, Charmino Bechanoy is a horrible individual who's 
ethos in life is askewed and depraved and they're the worst of people. They should be banished Misogynist, to Antarctica. Is, is to exactly. Yeah. Um, what do you think would be the response from the shills if you were to present them with Marsha Lucas and said, why are you purposefully forgetting this woman who contributed so much? She is literally, I mean, she's one of the most important women in the history of Hollywood in yeah. terms of what she did with the what was the biggest franchise on the planet until Disney shrinkify it. Literally shaped Star Wars as a woman. Uh, what, what, what would the shills say? What, what is their defense, X-Wing, since I, I doubt they'll have the, uh, the chutzpah to come on here? I would imagine, and you know, I can't profess to say how their mind works because uh, the inner workings of my brain are uh, simple and intelligent. So you cannot, you cannot <laughs> dare try to comprehend the labyrinth of lewdness ah, that is. I, the I, shield. I could not imagine to even profess. <laughs> <laughs> how what a good thought hits those shill brains! Uh, says, you shall not pass. But I would imagine <laughs> the response would be something along the lines of uh, she was under duress of. Um, uh, patriarchal who, white male who was it? oh marsha lucas was under duress <laughs> she was under duress of a, a patriarchal uh you know white male and and so actually what she wanted to do was not the final finished product of the film uh etc cetera, etc cetera. gotcha well uh you know it's something to see it's something to see them purposefully i think totally forget the leaders who should be the beacons right they should be in history we should know their names and they will forget them as fast as they possibly can Indeed. in order to promote whatever the, the most, you know, current virtue signal is of the day. And of course, that goes to just what you were saying when it comes to Bryce Dallas Howard. Indeed. Again, this this going right into, uh, I guess, where the shills would often go, uh, the StarWarsFandom.com. This is the Wikipedia, which, yes, folks, if you look at the top in that uh, in that icon uh, that they have. <laughs> they banned me on Twitter, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> uh, all the colors of the spectrum up there in Wikipedia and then a particular set of colors in uh, the Star Wars wiki because it's always a particular month and a particular cause in this place. So this tells you the shills mm. feel very I support the there. current thing. That's right. The shills would love this spot. So we'll hit them with their favorite spot. Uh, Bryce Dallas Howard, of course. She shaped a galaxy far, far away by being the director. No, of, uh, she didn't. Uh, one, two, three, four. Five episodes of Disney Plus shows. No, she uh, didn't. X-Wing, did, tell me how she was it. converted by the patriarchy, please. She did not shape anything, pro. Okay, tell me how. Obey, tell me how. Obey Chinoy is going to be the first one to do it. The first. I see. Well, that's first. convincing because that's you've yeah. literally made the claim that she has and the shills have because there's nothing more to it. Just, well, you know what the problem was? These are not the women you're looking for. The, the big problem was is that she filmed these episodes um, – Arguably, to, to some of us, it was some of the best content out of those shows that uh, a lot of people didn't like, and I, I totally get it. I think that she did do the best out of all of the female directors for the, you know, the episodes. Uh, a lot of people will argue that the Boba Fett episode um, from Deborah Chow was was incredible, but the problem is she has red hair and she's white. Therefore, she does not qualify as a woman. We can't have that's not that's a disqualifier. Mm, that is a very disqualifier. Sad to hear. Yeah. Um, you know, and Marsha Lucas, of course, uh, that's an Anglo disqualifier. Anglo name, Anglo last name. Very sad to hear that yeah. disqualifier. You cannot shape life. Star Wars if you don't have the midichlorian count. I'm sorry, the melanin count that we expect. Exactly. Yeah. But uh, folks, I hope that we have shown you that women have always played a crucial part in Star Wars. In fact, were it not for at least one woman, uh, Star Wars basically would not have existed because it would have fallen flat and failed out of the gate. And that's it. Game over. No trilogy. No, no. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Hold on. Let's, let's go to full screen. Pull that back up, X-Wing. Okay, I will. This is one of my favorite figures. I have 378 card back figures hung on my wall here. This is one of my favorite. Beautiful. We Cara shall Dune. not forget the Cara strongest Dune. woman of them all. But I'm a misogynist. Well, you know, though, X-Wing, it also, you bring up uh, uh, Carrie Fisher. She played uh, a, a part in the in the movies beyond just her role. You bring True. up Gina Carano. She also, I think, was uh, 
doing more than just reading lines. She was attempting to make that character her own. It's not just the directors. It's not just the writers. It's also the women who've been in these uh, in these movies and so many more. And that's that's why I find this offensive, frankly, is uh, we are required to memory hole the successes and the accomplishments of so many so that Charmino Bay Chinoy can break a ceiling that is utterly meaningless because it was broken four, five decades ago. And she is she is the last person running in the marathon who crosses the line in last place and declares that she's the winner and she wants the trophy. That is Charmino Bay Chinoy. A professional victim, and we've lost sight completely of what it means to be a feminist. I grew up with a mother who was five foot four, tiny little girl, first woman to graduate college. She graduated double major accounting and finance and forged her way in this world. So when I think about a feminist and and what it means to be a woman, she raised a family of five kids while holding a C-level position in the company. You're out of your mind if you think I'm going to bow to some chick who's not wait, wait, wait. successful you're, on Wait, wait, <laughs> X-Wing, are you saying that you're not uncomfortable? No, not at all. Oh, me neither, me neither. Yeah. Uh, and men also are not a monolith. <laughs> so uh, whatever you might try, it may offend some, it may make some uncomfortable, and some need to be uncomfortable. But as for us, I think we, uh, we stand very uh, confident in our positions. Folks, again, if any of the shills out there, and uh, maybe we're saying that disparagingly, but uh, if, if any of them would like to come on to the channel and defend this position that Charmino Bechinoy is the first woman to shape Star Wars, come on. Come on here. I, I don't know how you're going to defend it. I'd love to be there. But we're not uncomfortable because we can read. <laughs> it's just that simple. But we will defend the women who made Star Wars what it is. We will defend them. We will say that they did what they did because they deserve to be recognized and Whatever this bizarro Amen. new wave feminine feminism or is that that desecrates the history of the women who made these uh, major accomplishments, we reject it. One thing we don't reject, though, folks, is X Wing. His content is fantastic. X Wing, you've got a live stream that uh, you do on a weekly basis. Tell the folks out there about it. I do, yes. So uh, go ahead and join me over on X Wing. I do do once a week. I do a, a kind of a. <clears throat> A small cafe live stream. <laughs> hang oh, out with your hand gestures. Drivers. I thought it might be a massage part. No, I no. What that was. Yeah, no, I no, charge no. extra for that, actually. Indeed. Um, uh, we keep it quiet. We like to have fun. We talk about, uh, you know, articles that have come up, uh, what we think about what's going on with Star Wars. Unfortunately, it's getting harder and harder and harder to talk about Star Wars without getting upset <laughs> because it's just been really bad. So we're starting to open up and do, uh, uh, you know, different aspects of, of pop culture and, and trying to bring people in and then just enjoy our time because sometimes it's tough to talk about this stuff. It just sucks. Actually, my final thought, you tell me if I'm wrong. I think that uh, Miss Charmaine Obechinoy probably doesn't know the history of Star Wars very well. And I have a, I have a hunch that, she was worried she was about to lose the budget or she was about to have this thing moved to Disney plus and she wants a big box office blockbuster. And the sacrifice that was appropriate for her was every woman who's ever worked on the franchise before there an appropriate sacrifice for her to get to make the activist film she wants. And she can declare that she is the ultimate feminist while she buries all of the females who came before her. I, I, I don't, I think it's as simple as that. I don't think she cares about a Marsha Lucas I don't think she cares about a Bryce Dallas Howard. She has a goal, and this was a way to protect getting that goal. Your final thought on that X-Wing, do you think that's accurate? It's a little tough because you have a filmmaker who's had to deal with um, the actual reality of, of horrible patriarchy in a different country, in Pakistan, right? right? But, you, but so, if you take that and you, and you apply it to the rest of the world where such a patriarchy at least, at least to any sane person does not exist, and you believe that it does, it, it's going to go over poorly. So herein lies the problem. You come to a place like the United States where we don't stone women to death. <laughs> and Which, I have if there's to, a, if there's I have a to ask there, the question, just know we had to bleep it. <laughs> I have to ask the question, why do you fit into our fandom? I don't know. Where we'll is see. your? Where does your activism fit into my... Uh, fandom and it it just doesn't it may be a medication for a disease that exists somewhere in the world but is not for this patient 
and Star Wars is not the vehicle uh, to deal with that. Although, you know, we, we do appreciate when people rise up and challenge evil in the world. It's just if you take that same cudgel that you use to bash evil and you use it against people who are good and trying to do their best and you use their franchise for it, probably not a great thing. We don't know what she's going to do, but we do know one thing, and that is that she'll trample over the women of the past to get to that goal. All right, folks, that's it for today. Like, share, subscribe. Click it. Stick it to the algorithms. It's the notification bell. Drop a comment down below. Let us know who are your favorite women who have worked on Star Wars. That is a positive retort to what these ninnies out there are doing to the women who accomplish so much. We will not forget them. All right, folks, wherever you are and whatever you're doing, keep learning, keep growing, and keep having fun. This is one big cultural appropriation, don't you think? What do you mean? We're just celebrating the Year of Med Mutt. There's no thing called the Year of Med Mutt. There's a dog, but not a Med Mutt. Where'd he get this from? Were you reading Time Magazine again? No. But I just figured that since he's so generous, he deserved to be like Star of the Year. The goat, if you will. <laughs> no, no. You all know goats are hot. You're just trying to suck up to him to get a membership on our channel, aren't you? Maybe. That's so disgusting. I'd say you should be ashamed of yourself, but trying to butter up to him like that... <sighs> then again, it is you. Look, man, butter worked on Jonas. <laughs> <sighs> Putting butter on a second-degree burn isn't a solution. Besides that, there's like another restraining order against you going near anyone in the kitchen. But y you know what there isn't a court order for? Subscribing to WDW Pro and bookmarking thatparkplace.com where John Trent is editor-in-chief so you can keep ahead of the culture curve and get accurate information, which will also keep you from getting burned by the mainstream media. <laughs> so you are saying I did a sick burn. <sighs> You're an idiot. <laughs> I'm gonna clean all this up. <laughs> mm. Yeah, I'm not cleaning it up. <laughs>